Hey everybody, it's Emily Dark Schooling, and I'm coming to you today with some horror recommendations. I won't call myself like a, a horror buff or anything like that, but I've always been drawn to like horror movies, horror novels, scary things. I grew up in the time of Stephen King and Christopher Pike and John Saul. And like that is what I what I devoured as a teen, as a child. And um, it's just always kind of been there. And I decided this past year that I really wanted to get more into like horror reading. And so I subscribed to Nightworms and now I get like horror novels every month and I haven't read most of the ones I've gotten yet but I have read some things this year. See, I think only one of these recommendations actually came from Nightworms but that's fine. I'm still gonna read a bunch of stuff next year too. So I just wanted to share some things that I've read this year so that if you want to read more spooky scary things I have some options for you. Now I'm gonna try to tell you like on a scale of like not scary to really scary so that you are prepared going in. Maybe you just want to dabble in horror and you don't want anything that's going to really freak you out or maybe you want to go there. I don't know that anything I'm recommending today is like really really scary but I'll try to give you an idea. So let's just jump in with my new favorite author. I have two books to recommend from Paul Tremblay because um, I read both of these this year and just loved them. First up, I want to talk about A Head Full of Ghosts. I've had this on my shelves for forever. Honestly, that's almost the case for most of these. <laughs> and I just, I finally picked it up this year. And it's fantastic. This is what I would say more of a thriller than horror, but it is still within the realm of horror. This is a story about a family who is dealing with their daughter's possession and the whole book you're you're wondering like what was actually happening here because you're only learning about it from the perspective of the youngest daughter and so this is kind of an unreliable narrator situation you don't really know if she really knew what was happening and it's just told in a really interesting way I loved this <laughs> I thought it was fantastic I want to read everything he's written, which led me to pick up The Cabin at the End of the World. And also I want to sidebar that this is being adapted by M. Night Shyamalan, which makes me a little anxious because I don't always trust him, <laughs> his movies. I mean, sometimes they're good and sometimes I'm just like, why? why? But I'm hoping he doesn't ruin this because this was such a great story. This is a very... um isolating kind of a story. This is a story about a family um, going to visit their summer cabin. They just want to get away. They want to go somewhere kind of isolated to just get away from everything. They don't have internet access. That was their goal. And they are hoping to have a relaxing vacation. And suddenly some strangers come by. This is a sort of home invasion kind of a story with a twist and it's done in such a creepy way. It's so unsettling. I, home invasion is the thing that scares me maybe the most, like someone invading my home where I feel like I should be the safest is very anxiety inducing for me. So I had kind of been worried about reading this, but I, I found it so intriguing. The, the writing was so good and it was such a compelling story that I was like too invested to stop even though I was kind of feeling uncomfortable. So I'd say this is scarier than this, but they're still, I would say, mid-level horror. They're, neither of them are gonna like give you nightmares, per probably. This one could, I suppose. This one probably not. But I just, I loved the characters. I loved the world building and the character development over the story and I love an ambiguous ending, so thought those were both fantastic. The next book I want to talk about is the one I think I read the most recently here, and that was Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. I wanted to read something by Lily Anderson because she has a new book out this year in the Buffyverse world, and like, I want that to be amazing, so I wanted to read something she's written to see if I liked her writing. 
turns out that I do. <laughs> this book was so good. This is a story about a girl whose best friend just died. And there's been two other deaths very recently in their school, all girls, and she's convinced that there's a serial killer. But she can't get everyone to believe her because the first two girls who died, it made it look like it was a suicide. And then when her best friend dies, it also looks like it could have been a suicide. So the police are just like, nah, I guess you have three suicides back to back. What are you going to do? And she's convinced that that's not the case. She's also a witch. And she and her best friend were very into Wicca and spells and all of that thing. And so she decides that she's going to find a spell to bring back her friend and find out what happened. And it goes a little awry, but this is a story about, like, her and her friends and learning about people that you thought you hated. The protagonist in this book is phenomenal. She's just such a great character. And she's the kind of character, too, who usually gets relegated to sidekick status. But she's the main character in this story. She's such an awesome heroine. And I loved her just attitude about everything. The way she, like, f philosophized about life and what was happening around her. And dealing with mean girls and all of that. Just, it was so good. I feel like this is such an underrated book because I never hear anyone talk about it. I've had this on my shelves for like three or four years. And in that time, I think I've only heard one person talk about this book. And so like, I feel like more people should read Lily Anderson. This is another book that is just not that scary. It's more of like, if you've watched Vampire Diaries or that kind of stuff, it's that kind of scary. It, it's like there's zombies and undead and that kind of stuff. There's a murderer, but it's not, like, scary. This will not give you nightmares. This is a book that I think, um, if you're wanting to try horror without reading anything too scary, this is a good place to start. Next, I want to talk about Sundial by Catriona Ward. This, um, I've been wanting to read this author. I did get this in my Nightworms, so I did actually read a Nightworms subscription book, and I liked this a lot more than I expected. I really didn't know what I was getting into. And in the first, like, little bit of the story, I thought it was going to be, like, marriage drama, and that is just not my thing. I don't really enjoy reading about bad marriages, if that is the central plot of the story. But thankfully, that is not the case with this book. This is a story about a family and some weird things in that family's past. This is a story about a weird little girl who sees, um, who has an imaginary friend who might be a ghost. It's a story about a house and the things that happened there. There's twins in this book. Um, it was just a really unsettling and interesting story and I found it really super compelling. Like, Katrian Award's writing is just addicting. You can't really stop because you need to know what's going on and what's happening and unravel this weird mystery and who's doing what, and it's just, it was a really fun ride, and I definitely want to check out more of her writing in the future. This one is a lot more unsettling than scary. I feel like if you are new to horror, or you just want to try to get your feet wet without, like, giving yourself nightmares, this is probably a little bit scary, I'm not a great judge of this. A lot of the time when I hear people talk about books that they think are really scary, I'm like, that was scary? Are you sure? Like, that wasn't scary. <laughs> but, you know, it is a little unsettling. So I would say this might make you feel really creeped out. But it isn't super scary. I'm doing a terrible job describing how scary things are. I'm sorry. Keep in mind, I read The Exorcist when I was 12, so <laughs> I'm not great at that. The next book I want to talk about is Go Hunt Me, and this is by Kelly DeVos. This is really fun. And again, this is almost more of a thriller than horror, but I think it would fall into either category. This is another YA, like Undead Girl Gang. This is a story about a group of teenagers who are working on their senior project, and they're hoping to go to film school. And this is a project that the main character is doing as her kind of audition piece 
to get into an elite film school. And so they need to make this movie and they want to do a really good job. It's horror. So they get invited to go to this weird castle in Transylvania in which to film their movie. They're given a small budget so they have the money the location. It should be great, right? Until suddenly her cast of, of friends and and characters in her movie start dying and they have to figure out who's who's killing them all. So this is a story that I think will keep you guessing. You won't see the end coming and it's it's very fun and twisty and spooky but without being really scary. I feel like this is similar to Undead Girl Gang in tone. It's almost more fun than scary. The characters in this are all really interesting, but they're not super fleshed out. This is written kind of like a slasher. If you're familiar with slasher movies, you don't really need to know the characters that deeply because for the most part, they're there, they're there to die. So you do get to know the characters in this book a little more than you would in, say, a movie like Friday the 13th, but still you know they're there to die. So like it's a really fun and interesting story and like I said kind of plot twisty and not what you expect. Based on the cover I thought this was gonna have vampires in it. I mean it's set in Transylvania but no. And then the last thing I want to talk about is more of an author recommendation and that's Eric LaRocca. I discovered his writing actually I think last year and I read more of it this year and I would say if you're the kind of person who likes really weird and bizarre and unsettling things but mostly just the vibes he's for you <laughs> like read his writing um I read things have gotten worse since we last spoke I think is the name of it and then I also recently read you've lost a lot of blood both of these are what I would call all vibes not no plot horror <laughs> it's it's very like so unsettling like the writing is very weird and strange and particularly you've lost a lot of blood doesn't make a lot of sense but yet, I was so compelled to keep reading. Like, I needed more of it. I, I could not stop. And I would say if you're really into, like, spooky vibes and you really like things that are bizarre and make you just, like, question what, what you're reading <laughs> and fill your head with some really weird imagery, Eric LaRocca, like such good like chef's kiss like so so excellent i want to read everything he ever writes because it's just so bizarre and so like unsettling and i love every bit of it and i would say that's probably the scariest thing i'm recommending today just because the imagery and the weirdness of it is just so like mm, wonderful so I hope that I've recommended something to you today that you can check out to get some good spooky vibes at the end of October. Um, let me know down below what is your favorite scary movie like or your fa favorite scary book. What do you read or watch to get into spooky season? My youngest and I are on a mission to watch all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies because this is the first time she's watched them and she's just loving it. So that's exciting for me because when I was her age, I was obsessed with Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street. So, super fun. Um, so yeah, let me know that down below in the comments. What's your favorite scary book or scary movie? And we can chat about it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Happy reading. Bye.